Hello and welcome to this video about output 4 for the student assignment. Um, this one looks at the hard copy outputs that you'll take from your SOLIDWORKS models. In this video then we're going to look at the marking scheme for this output. We will look at then a little bit closer at the official requirements for it. Um, we'll then look at what do you need to put on each page of output 4 and um, how do you choose the appropriate views and the annotation for those views how you should format your page and then I'll give you a sample output for a layout that you can use to figure out how you're going to set up yours. So looking then at the marking scheme what you'll see is that output 4 is worth 15 marks just like it was in the past so there's not any change there so we can assume then that the criteria for the correction isn't going to be too dissimilar to this one. Um, it is going to be two pages though, um, so that is still the same as it was um, as it was before. So these 15 marks are split over those two pages. Um, and again, what you'll see in other ones that are similar, you'll see that they're looking at an extensive range of relevant criteria considered with excellent presentation, all the way down to at least one criteria considered with poor presentation and the marks that go with those. Okay. Um, what we'll be doing is that we'll be looking at it to make sure that we can maximize those marks as much as we can. So looking at the requirements then for the marking scheme a little bit more carefully, we're going to be putting in detailed orthographic views of your selected artifact. You're going to have section and detailed views where appropriate, okay? And um, they say or, but we want to kind of have both, okay, just to make sure we have all our bases covered. Uh, we're going to have pictorial view of the assembly, an exploded view of the CAD model, and that's going to be of the assembly as well. You can only do um, exploded views of assemblies. Um, you can't actually do exploded views of... Um, parts. Then you're going to have inclusion of your main dimensions, notes and symbols. You'll appropriately scale your uh, views and then you'll think about your layout and your presentation, okay, to make sure that everything kind of makes sense. A lot of that is going to be um, looked at in the scaling and the annotation that you put into your into your sheet. Practically speaking, then what does that look like on your on your pages? So we're going to have two pages. We'll have output four page one and output four page two. What I would recommend is having on output four page one, the first thing to see is going to be your orthographic views, making sure that we have those dimensioned. To have your rendered pictorial view, a sectional view and your detailed views. The reason the sectional view is a good idea to put on the first page is that you need orthographic views in order to be able to take a sectional view. Okay, so it just makes sense to have those on the same page. And then you'll have some detailed views. On the second page then, I will put the exploded view. Uh, the reason I will keep the orthographic views and the exploded views on different pages is just simply because they're the biggest views. Okay, they take up the most space. Um, then you'll have more detailed views and pictorial views of the most interesting parts. Now, I say parts there because what you want is that you're not only going to be showing um, views of your assembly, you're also going to be showing views of your parts, okay, to show that you're able to do that. And one of the key things then is that you keep the white space to a minimum, okay, so we don't really want any white space on this, on either of these sheets, and um, we haven't got that much room, so we really want to use everything that's available to us. So then the next question that we have to think about is what are those views going to be of, okay? And what I'd always say is that you should choose the views which best show off the parts of your SOLIDWORKS model that you're most proud of. So it might be a particular part or there's some features that you really like or maybe some of your surface modeling that you've done and you really want to show that off on these pages. So make sure that you, you bear that in mind. And then you have your four comparison headings that you did in output one page two that you can use to then kind of give you a lot more view. So at least four views to kind of go on top of your, the ones that you need. So on top of your orthographic views and your uh, pictorial views. And um, then what you want to do is create display states and configurations in your uh, assembly to allow you to actually use the, um, the views that you've decided you want to have. Okay, then in terms of your annotation, so annotation is really important in this uh, output as well, just like it is in output two. Um, you want to label the type of view directly underneath it, so that's the, at the bare minimum. Then when annotating, try to answer these questions. So what is the view showing? Why is the chosen detail important? 
how does the detail link to points made in previous outputs so specifically in output one page two so if in your annotation you answer those uh those kind of three questions then you're going to do pretty well with your with your annotation okay we want to make sure that that annotation is is short but that we're looking at answering those those three questions okay so you're not really going to have any more than maybe two or three sentences at the at the most um for your annotation all of these um these drawings so then how should you format your drawing pages? And really what I'd say with this is that you want to format it in the same way as you would format a drawing sheet generally uh, when you're doing your board drawing in DCG. So you're gonna have a 10 millimeter border around the outside. Um, you just need to bear in mind that the SOLIDWORKS watermark is going to go in the bottom left. Um, it used to be bigger than this, so actually now it fits underneath the 10 millimeter border, so it's not too big an issue now. Uh, you're going to have a title block in which you want to just label it as your student assignment uh, 2023 or whichever you're doing it in. Uh, your exam number then um, down in um, the next part, along with then the output and the page number. So you'll have output for page one and then you'll have a second page output for page two. Um, and then you want to put the name of your artifact in there. So the, the name of uh, your alarm clock or mouse or whatever it is the year that you're, that you're doing it. And then finally, you're going to have the projection symbol in there to show what type of orthographic views you're doing. So are you doing third angle or first angle? Now, the vast majority of people will be doing uh, first angle. Um, and this is the, the symbol for that. So you want to have that on your page as well. And then finally, then how would I lay out uh, my output for? And you'll see here I have my two pages. Um and I have my border, my title block and everything into it. So on the first page, I put in my orthographic views. Okay, so elevation plan and end view. Um, I'd encourage using the end view on the right just in terms of the layout. It just makes it a little bit uh, easier to fit everything else in. And um, put in your rendered pictorial view of your artifact, put in a sectional view. And again, it makes sense to put it next to the orthographic views because you'll need those to actually take your sectional view just practically. Um, then put in a, a detailed view in there that you think is, is useful. So that might be one of the things that you really like about your uh, model or possibly uh, one of the four comparison headings from um, output one page two. Um, then you're going to, on the second page, I'll put in my explode view. Now, depending on the orientation of your object, that might be a vertical explode view or it could be horizontal, which would then just move things around a little bit. Then I put in my, my detail views, which are really going to probably take off of your exploded view. Okay, so I'd, I'd use the uh, the circle detail view for that. Um, and then a part pictorial view, one or two of those. So those part pictorial views um, would be not of the assembly, but of individual parts. Okay, because it shows that you can do that. And then possibly a small little detail view down here if there's something kind of extra that you can fit into that into that gap down there. Okay. Um, one thing to remember is that you don't need to use your normal page labels in this output because you have a title block. Okay. Um, it's the only time that you won't use those page labels, but you already have all the information in there that you need. Um, and these are working drawings. So we wouldn't, we just wouldn't put those ones in there. Okay. Even after we've saved it as a PDF. And remember, every view must be annotated. So you need to make sure that you have annotation in all of your different views, okay? Um, your orthographic views, you'll be labeling the, the elevation plan in the end view and you'll be putting in your dimensions. So you won't have really much more annotation than that. But the rest of the, them, you want to make sure that you've annotated um, and answering the, the three questions that I spoke about earlier in this video. So thank you again for watching this video um, about Output 4. Um, if you found it useful, please give it a like and you can subscribe to my channel to um, be the first to know about any new videos that I upload. Um, and then if you did find it useful, share it with your, with your friends so that they can benefit from it as well. Um, and I will see you in the next time.